Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Shows, Style, and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. And as you can see from the title of this video, I will be giving my commentary on tonight's Messy Monday show starring Carlos King and Dr. Heavenly. Tonight, they interviewed Marquez Burnett, the husband of Trisha from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And he had some interesting things to say kind of triggered Carlos King, and we're going to get into it all. Now, before we do, I exit you. Please hit the like button on this video. You hear us content creators ask you to do that all the time because then YouTube will recommend this video to more people who enjoy discussing the various topics surrounding love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. I would definitely love to have you as one of the show stoppers. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed for criticism. Okay, so during the interview, um, Carlos King and Dr. Heavenly, they were talking to Marquez about the portrayal of him not being involved in his kids' lives to the point where Ken, Trisha's current boyfriend, while she's still married, is taking care of um, her children, taking her daughter to her dance competitions and letting her son have one of his vehicles. Well, Marquez um, talks about, actually Dr. Heavenly, mentions the comment bad edit and Carlos does not like it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and play this sound bite and then I will come back with my commentary. Clear it up, Marquez, you know, to clear it up. Because like I say, you didn't get a bad, you got a bad edit. I'm serious, you just did. Yeah. That's why I want to clear it up. What do you think about the public input you received from the show? What do you think about that? Like the public people, they just don't know you, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I think Dr. Heavenly, like, like you know, across, like, you know, nobody knows us like the people that know us, right? Right. So we, we can, we, we, we are, we are the ones, you know, I listen to you, Carlos, we talk about we are real superheroes, right? We are the real superheroes because we're putting ourselves in a position, not like an actor, right? We, we can do things where, where we can probably, you know, embellish or do whatever, but this is our real life. People really want to go and see who, who you, who, what you posted yesterday. Like, they really want to know, like, who you with and all that, so... You know, like, for me, um, I, I lost track of my thought. What was the question again? I'm sorry. What's, uh, what do you think about the public um, oh, input from the show? Yeah. I, I really think that it, that it's just misunderstood. I think that the edit portrayed it as if I have been gone for six years. I want. I need to clarify, you guys. Well, I, and I want to clarify things, too. We don't edit badly. No. So no, no, I'm going to... Yeah. No, no, I just want to say that because what we're not, what we're not going to do is say things like bad edit because that, that involves like in, integrity, motivation, and intention. So obviously, and I'm going to be very honest, I'm going to let you finish though. Trisha has been known to give bits and pieces of a story, right? right. We follow bits and pieces, right? So um, there's not anything production is doing because... This isn't artificial intelligence. We don't put words in people's mouths and, and all those things. So, and, and and what I would like for you to talk about more so, though, is the fact that we invited you here so that you're able to, of course, address things that you've been seeing. Obviously, <clears throat> I said on my own platform that when I cast Trisha, for, for example, I had no idea that Martel right. in this situation. When I cast Trisha, I had no idea that, you know, she was married to a whole nother man. And, and I'm the creator of the show. And I'm the one who hired her. You see what I'm saying? So um, there's a lot of things that have been said on the show because it's been said on the show. I, so, I don't agree with you. I, first, I don't, though, I don't, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I, I don't think you are either. No, I, yeah, I, be I, 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 I truly believe that, that for, for my specific, um, you know, episodes, it was my choice of words. I... Okay, so Dr. Heavenly said, 
you got a bad edit. Now, Dr. Heavenly, she's always said, if you've been following her YouTube, she'll, she's been saying it for years now that editors, they chop and screw it up. She'll say they chop it and screw it to where, you know, they'll make it look like the conversation was about this, but really we were discussing that. And that was the reason for her facial expression or for that um, response. So Dr. Heavenly was speaking from an on-air talent point of view and Carlos King, his rebuttal, his taking offense, in my opinion, was from the producer standpoint, you know, because he, you know, he kind of takes that personal, like you're speaking to his producing capabilities. But I mean, hey, Dr. Heavenly said it. Now, what I will say about this guy, Marquez, he's extremely talkative. He reminds me of Apollo Nida, Phaedra Park's ex-husband, super duper verbose, very wordy, Oh my gosh, you heard it even in that soundbite where she asked him about the bad edit and he was going on and on. And then he goes, I lost my train of thought. What was the question? Do just answer the question specifically. Oh my gosh. He goes on and on. He is extremely wordy. Um, he talked about having 15 years in the corporate American sector and he I wasn't even 100% clear because he said so much. He sounds like he could be a car salesman, just so super duper talkative. And yeah, it was a lot. It was a long interview, but I found that to be interesting that Carlos was so triggered by her just saying bad edit. And, you know, coming from his friend, I'm not convinced that Dr. Heavenly was shading Carlos at all. I think that she was speaking from the perspective of being an on-air talent herself and feeling like sometimes her scenes get chopped and screwed. And then also as a viewer of Love and Mayor Chunsville. And then she was trying to be nice to her interviewee. So she was trying to make him feel comfortable. Oh, yeah, you got a bad edit. Well, that wasn't the right thing because Carlos totally felt triggered. But Carlos, I, what I will say is that I found it very interesting that he was willing to call out Trisha and say that Trisha is known to give parts of a story when he will cape for everyone else. You know, on his channel, when he would go live before, like during season six, Carlos King would go live. Sometimes he would go live on like a random um, evening and he would tell people, you know, you can ask me questions and they would say, you know, you know, Kimmy and Maurice are boring. And like, he would disagree and he would uh, come up with things to defend them and, and about the other Scots, Marceau and Tisha as well. But with Trisha to combat that bad edit comment, he totally threw her under the bus, said she gives parts of stories. He did not even know that she was married, had an whole entire husband. And he's like, and I created the show and I hired her. Well, why didn't you know that? I know you can't control what Trisha tells you and not tell you, but I wouldn't even, if I was Carlos King, I would not have even have said that you didn't even know that she had a whole husband. Like you didn't even hear that through the grapevine. You didn't even hear that from your buddy, Martel. Martel had to have known, right? Even if, well, I know, I believe his brother is away right now. You know what I mean when I say away, but I was going to say, even if like Montez kind of knows Trisha currently, because I know that they were cool or went to school together before, even if he could put Martel up on game and then Martel tell Carlos, you know, but I wouldn't have even have said you didn't even know that one of the cast members on your show um, was married and you did not even know. That's not even something that you would want to repeat. But he definitely had to have a rebuttal to the point where he did not let uh, Mr. Chatterbox Marquez finish answering Dr. Heavenly's question. But... Um, also, Marquez, he decided to bring up Melody. You know, he totally admires her. He attended her Mimosas with Melody event over the past weekend. And 
he is going to talk about, first he's going to be talking about how um, Trisha gave Ken access to something that he, the husband, didn't even have. And then it's going to lead to him mentioning Melody. Here it is. The situation before Ken arrived was, it was jolly. I'm coming to the house, cooking her favorite meals. I'm like picking the kids up for school. She's like, hey, can you watch the kids while I go out of town? And I'm telling you, the first time that I found out who she was even dating was because I helped her pay $5,000 to move into a brand new house around the corner. And my daughter said, hey, daddy, we got a ring doorbell camera. We've never had one. So I'm looking at the ring doorbell camera. Who has the key code to the house that I just paid $5,000 for? Because I was I was traveling. I want to be clear. When I started working, I was traveling in Charleston, South Carolina, Houston. I had a high-level corporate job where I had to fly in and work with these corporations, and I would be back in Huntsville on the weekends. So also, being in Atlanta cut down on their flights. But my daughter says, we got a ring doorbell camera. I'm looking at the ring doorbell camera, and at 12.15, Trish is coming in. This is the night before we before I came there. So Thursday night is when, the, Friday they're supposed to move in. Thursday night they had moved everything in. The kids are at the old house in the same neighborhood. 12.15, Trish comes in, ring doorbell camera, 12.37, Ken walks up, boop, 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 got the key code before I do. And that was the first time I ever knew who she was talking to. I asked her, I said, Trish, I showed it to her right away. She said, oh, mind you, she's out of town with her friends. She's out of town with her friends, allegedly. And she says, oh, we just had a meeting about, about the gym. And I said it at 1237. My, I got the video on my phone right now, and I'm not going to be messy, but I have it on my phone. I hear you, baby, because she had a meeting with Marte, with Martell at the gym, about the gym. That's all I'm <laughs> hey, saying. Hey, 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 and she had a meeting with Martell, and I sat out and I heard about the meeting with Martell. And I and I, and I I literally walked in. I waited for 30 minutes to make sure I was hearing what I heard. And I walked in, and I told her, you're crazy, because why would you put herself in a situation where Martell is dealing with all of this? And I, and I swear on my... I'm not gonna swear, I promise you, the very next day I went to the courthouse and I ran into Melly filing for divorce. Mm. So, she was so, they were out. so after that, Dr. Heavenly says to him, so they were dating while you two were still married. They were having SEX, is that what you're saying? And Marquez goes, well, no, I can't say whether or not Martel and Trisha were intimate. I just know that they were having conversation. Um, when Melanie and Martel were still married, and obviously they were still married. So one thing I'm going to say about couples where there's all this infidelity and situations where like babies have been produced, the cheaters and those who are with the F-ish, they're always trying to do the math and calculate and it takes nine months for a baby to be born and all the overlapping. They're always trying to make sense of it. And that totally gives uh, Trisha, Martell, Ken and, and the Fletchers. OK, it's always some overlapping and confusion because, you know, folks are running around on people. So I'll just I'll never have the patience or the respect for that. But um, Marquez, during this interview, he tried to almost present Trisha as being very um, broken emotionally, almost like she's had major serious issues. He even said that her family is into keeping secrets. They are not very talkative, but I'm sure next to Marquez, I'm sure he thinks a lot of people are quiet next to him. My goodness. And so I, I don't like how, have you ever dated a guy who's divorced? And, you know, when you talk about past relationships, they totally trash the wife. They make it seem like the divorce is all due to her. And I'm like, I have a brain. I'm not an idiot. I know it cannot be 100% your wife's fault that the marriage did not work. So now I've already got the radar up that you're, you're a dishonest person. Instead of just putting it out there, lay your cards on the table, say what went wrong. So I feel like, you know, you have that opportunity to be honest with me. We're trying to get to know each other. And I already sense like you're lying. So I didn't like how Marquez was trying to present Trisha 
as like this broken person, you know, who had this horrible, or let me not say horrible, but came from a family that perhaps was almost just as awkward as she comes off on TV because you still married her. You still got her pregnant a couple of times and was married to her for years before you decided to dip. But that's how he was definitely uh, portraying her. And Dr. Heavenly and Carlos, they were pandering to him, saying, you know, with they're portraying you as, you know, you miss your daughter's dance competition. Marquez said that in that time, you know, it, it was taking place in Florida. And Trisha talked him into getting like a vacation home. And before he could pay for it, she called him and said, never mind, my friend Ken paid for it. He's going to be there. And he said that Trisha gave him the wrong time so that he would miss the dance competition. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a major fan of the show Dance Moms on Lifetime. And those dance competitions, you could Google them. You could totally get the schedule. So I don't know why he would totally rely on Trisha, especially if they weren't on the best of terms. If it was my kid, I would have Googled it myself to make sure that I had all of the correct information. Or he could have called the dance coach as well. But, you know, that's what that interview was about. He even tried to get emotional. He was just giving actor. And then he even tried to pitch a show to Carlos during the interview, a show that would be for men so that they can talk about their feelings. And guess what? Mr. Chatterbox Marquez, he has launched his own podcast. So there he can talk as much as he wants. But do we need another male-led podcast where they spread misinformation to other men about how to treat a woman? No, we do not need any more of those. But he has entered the podcasting space. But what do you think about Carlos King being so offended by the bad editing comment? And what did you think about uh, Marquez being smitten with Melody? I think that he would probably love to do business with her. But he is so talkative and confusing, child. Oh, my gosh. But um, that that was definitely interesting that he he saw her. I wish they had followed up with, you know, what were you doing at the courthouse? <laughs> but instead, they were like, oh, they they totally went to Martell and Trisha. So are you saying they were having SEX? And he's like, well, I don't know what they were doing. But um, definitely, he he needs to co-host with Apollo on his podcast, that thing will be three, four, five, six hours. You could drive from Detroit to Chicago, probably on one of his podcast episodes. But I hope that you all had a magnificent Monday. I did. I can't complain. After work, I logged out and I walked outside for 40 minutes. Then I came in I watched this interview. It was almost an hour and a half. And then I've produced my content. So now I'm going to enjoy myself as a subscriber and find some stuff to get into. But if you did have a manic Monday, I am sorry to hear that. Try not to be anxious about it. You will have a terrific Tuesday. You can journal about your day. You will feel better. That problem will shrink when you write it down on paper and even go back and read it. You can pray about it to God. Ask him to help you with whatever it is that you're dealing with. You can go to the gym tonight or work out to a YouTube workout in your basement. That will make you feel fantastic. And then take a shower and go to bed. You'll feel nice. And then moisturize with your 7th Avenue. Yes. Okay. And I snaps in Z formation. Well, I will talk with you all very soon. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to show style and spirit if you have not already done so. And I will talk with you soon. Bye.